friends and family, so today we're talking about the development update and early combat footage that was actually released at 11 a.m. PT, Friday, October 30th, 2020. <laughs> I don't know why they have their whole title that way, but for Ashes of Creation, the hypest, newest, upcomingest MMORPG. That is promising epic PvP, class customization, and freedom of player agency, uh, and expressive combat when it comes to open world gameplay. Okay, well, I'm not going to talk about everything in this development log. This is really just more of a rant style video, or I made a list of things that I cared about. And often is the case, this is more critical because the game is mostly getting a sugar-coated reception based on YouTube because frankly, they do have an influencer program. So if you see someone like Lazy Peon or someone else just making, there's all the reasons why it's going to succeed. Oh yeah, but also here's this code and you can like buy into the game and I get a kickback for that. Yeah, so anyways, there's a lot of that going on. So this is gonna be mostly criticisms. And if you're okay, with that approach and that perspective with the perspective that there is so much positivity in the world already for this game and also knowing that I'm excited for the game then I think we can have some fun okay so I just wanted to say some stuff in things and it's not all negative okay I just I, people label me as a hater I'm not a hater <laughs> I'm just genuinely excited I want it to succeed and I do see some faults and problems um, with this that I want to you know I, I want to rant about and if you guys are along for that ride then awesome make sure to subscribe we're gonna get to 100k because we're awesome uh, we're doing this fan mainly but um, yeah Okay, so this diary was um, pretty quick and clean. They, a couple of people dressed up. <laughs> Me? Okay. Um, but frankly, I also approach these videos. Um, I really focus on what they show, less what they say. Uh, Kickstarters and MMOs in general, they sell themselves on dreams and what could be. And I know that's kind of also the point of these videos, but I want to talk about what they literally show and then kind of you know, how they play against what they're saying. Um, but focus, focusing, focusing, focus on what is actually playable, showable, seeable for the most part. But immediately the thing to actually mention here is that people who have access to the game, who are able to play on the tests, for until March 19th, there is a non-disclosure agreement that you cannot upload your own footage. Now there might be maybe likely actually some specific youtubers this has happened with me a bunch of times with games like new world or some others uh, but some content creators sometimes um they have influencer programs and they're allowed to maybe cover some certain things but for the most part there's an nda so completely unbiased video footage and reviews of this game will not come out until march 19th i'm making that note because uh, again i do want to promote the idea that all of what you are seeing so far on YouTube is sugarcoated. That there's frankly it is. It's totally biased. Um, except for me, because I'm awesome. But also to know that, okay, the NDA drops March 19th. And if you're like me and you're a content creator, you might not even want to start playing until then, uh, buy in until then. March 19th, backers and stuff will be able to play the game. And that's also, March 19th is going to be really hype because that's when you're going to see tons and tons of content come out. So it's not just like, oh, this is when we get to see the real bad, you know, glitches and stuff like that. No, this is probably when the game is, is well enough along that uh, they deemed it worthy enough that the NDA can drop and that it's going to be really fun to play. And you just, you think people are going to do maybe, I don't know, cosmetic mount offs and things like, you know, from Asmongold, uh, you know, transmog competitions. This is when people are going to do the PvP montages. This is when people are going to do the let's plays and obviously first impressions and reviews. Sure. But yeah, no, it's, it's going to be a fun time. March 19th is something to be really excited for but I also wanted to mention this because okay look I know there's sort of a gray area with this because people technically invested in the game and then were gifted keys out of the goodness out of their heart to be able to play the game early and test it you know work for them for free but personally I'm of the belief that if you paid money for a game how the how the fuck can they say that there's an NDA you bought the game, basically. I don't care what they call it. Like, it, really, developers have all the power to say, oh, it's beta, oh, it's in this state, or what have you. If you spent money, and there's even a cash shop in the game, if you can do this stuff, uh, it, dude, the game's released. The game is out. It just sucks. That's it, you know? So whether a game is technically gold or released or beta, that's all completely arbitrary bullshit now. So if you're a backer and you can play the game and you're basically working for free, even though this game has made an insane amount of money and totally can hire playtesters, you're kind of doing it for free. 
I can't believe that they won't let you uh, record it, especially because, uh, you know, this game is kind of known for its apparent transparency and apparent, um, you know, publicity. Like, it's it's really good with its public works, with its uh, communication uh, in terms of social media communication, in terms of advertisement and marketing. It's really smart and really good. But at the same time, it's kind of a facade. Um, if they truly were open and completely just abundantly honest, there wouldn't be an NDA. And obviously that's asking too much. I get it. And it's a Kickstarter game. I get it, dudes. But I'm just saying it's something that I just feel really shitty about. You know, as somebody who grew up with dreams, I really did. I dreamed of like, oh man, one day I'm going to be a game tester. And then it's like, that kind of doesn't exist the way that it used to. Um, that whole, you basically, basically people just do it for free. And it's an MMO and like, you know, they do need lots and lots of testers, but then it's like, well then shouldn't it just be open? Shouldn't it be open? Shouldn't you be stressing your servers? Shouldn't you have as many people as possible that want to just work for free? Uh, not only not only are people working for free, but they're paying to promote and invest in this game and then work for free. And then you're not letting them actually make videos on the game and share it with the community so we can talk about it, make the game better. Ah, anyways, so that's my rant as obviously a YouTube MMO content creator. But yeah, let's talk about some of the footage that they have shown. Uh, the footage in the background is actually a PvP event that they kind of threw together, which the developers actually cheated during, so it's not even like a real fight. It's not actually like what really would happen. Uh, so all right, let's actually talk about that. Um, I actually was a part of something for New World. And if you actually watch New World footage, a lot of the early footage, it looked a certain way and maybe it seemed really exciting and stuff like that. I promise you that the game when it releases will actually not play like that because uh, whenever these, co these companies, any company, any company ever, whenever they make trailers and things, and even though this looks so honest, it looks just like a general like oh we just got together and slapped each other around even though it looks like that they always stage it they always use cheats they always make it in a certain way so that you can see certain footage and basically that's that's what i wanted to say so moving forward whenever you see any footage of this game especially early trailers of this game you might have seen you know these epic sieges against walls and all these people clashing and all these crazy abilities you might notice and crowfall did this and basically every mmo ever has done this you might notice that the trailer footage even even though it is technically gameplay footage, looks and plays fucking nothing like the actual game. So anyways, apparently here we have apparent actual footage and it's a stream, so how could it be staged and everything? But we do still have a developer who instead of using camera controls or using some sort of system in place to actually record the, like just raw actual competitive footage of people actually trying, um, we just kind of have people, I think just kind of running around slapping each other with insane particle effects. And that's what I want to segue into. Holy, that's what I have actually my, my, my little note here, my bullet point, it says, Holy goddamn particle effects. And so even though I do want to talk about what they show, it is important to, to talk about what they say. They actually did mention that people have complained about the particle effects. Okay, so history might repeat itself. Um, Guild Wars 2 also had people complain about particle effects, and they eventually like months later, did implement systems to reduce particle effects. And in this uh, dev stream here, they did mention that they're going to be doing certain passes uh, to alleviate the particle effects and everything like that. Okay, so I who, I mean, who the fuck am I, right? I just went to college for video game design. I just been reviewing MMOs for a decade. Who am I to say um, how you should design your MMO? But I do think that history just keeps repeating itself with games and particle effects are just too fucking much in every mmo ever there's just too much god noise there's too much noise um and this game more than any other looks really noisy and there's a couple reasons why that's really bad that we can rant about but in a pvp like there there's times where you just can you can't see you cannot see not not are things obscured a little bit not are things noisy there are times where you cannot see. It is literally a smoke screen because there is so much particles flying everywhere. And in a game where there's all these players and in a game with the graphics being already very noisy, the lighting is very dark, everything is kind of grimy and gritty, it, it's going to look like garbage on 
just playing it pristinely on your system, on your monitor, but especially, again, as a content creator, it's going to look like garbage on streams, which it did on the stream. Um, if you guys don't know the encoding of streams, things like confetti and things like um, crowds of people or things like MMOs, which have lots of moving pieces all over the screen, um, it kind of fucks with the, the, the graphics. It, it fucks with how the, like, the, the video actually plays out. It just makes it really messy. See, like it just it makes it look even worse so I think I'm actually gonna make a video um, to kind of parallel uh, everyone else is doing like list videos of like oh my god why this game is going to succeed I legitimately think that one reason um, why this game is going to fail or pot potentially fail you know I think it's gonna still succeed that's why I'm talking about it uh, but potentially fail is gonna be the graphics uh, that's a big reason, like, me trying to take screenshots and video recording in Guild Wars 2 early on in my YouTube career um, kind of failed. Like, it, the game kind of just looked ugly and it didn't record very well and it just wasn't, it just didn't fit, uh, you know, World of Warcraft is still kind of messy, but it still is, is very clean. Elder Scrolls Online, when I stream it, is kind of ugly. You know, there's like, MMOs tend to be ugly, they're noisy uh, when you make video content on them. And I think that this game is going to suffer from that. I think definitely big time. I think people are gonna wanna watch Asmund Gold's transmogs on World of Warcraft and not Ashes of Creation. I think the general art style, the art, the, the feel, the look of the game just it just doesn't have that clean production value of World of Warcraft. And people hate it, but it, there's a reason why it succeeded. There's a reason why it continues to even, you know, actually prosper. Um, and I do think that cleanness of the art style really is a is a big, big, big reason. Um, anyways, no, there's a place for it. And I think the particle effects can be good. But basically, I, um, I would like to damn kind of the idea of just taking basic average particle effects like really I think you can buy I think most of the stuff is from the Unreal Engine store if you ever played with the Unreal Engine uh, you know that this game looks so Unreal Engine there is almost no stylistic uh, uniquity to it whatsoever like it really does look like it's just thrown together in Unreal Engine and that was a that was a huge complaint the very first time this game was even announced um, and ever since then, it's just like, oh man, it really looks like they just threw together particle effects and then they're trying to fine tune them. But I think maybe it should be done differently. I think they should come with a minimalistic and clean approach to the effects. Like instead of having these grotesque, epic fireballs, then maybe they should basically be like runescapes. Like it should just be like a colored red ball. I think maybe that's how they should do it. But then again, a lot of people don't care about the cleanness or competitiveness. They want want it to be a wow factor because a lot of people don't think about what it's going to actually play like um they're just like oh man big fireballs and stuff like that and people say graphics don't matter um it will later on but especially right now the game being as messy as it is it's kind of better it's better that the game looks like really high cron contrasty it's got a massive amount of motion blur and post processing and it the game looks like it's almost being developed from the opposite end of how most competitive games would be designed because it is being designed basically in reverse because the game overwhelmingly to sell to continue to sell and to broadcast itself as um a pretty mmo it needs to just have all these effects layered on so people don't realize how poopy it actually is because people don't actually think about the competitive nature of games but mmos aren't competitive Okay, yeah, 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 whatever. Anyways, uh, yeah, so particle effects are insane. They need to be toned down immediately. And I, I really, I just, I really, I don't know. There's something, ju I'm just going to say, there's something just a little kind of shitty about the grossness of the particle effects. And it really is just screaming like, hey, we're pretty, aren't we? We're pretty. But I got to tell you, as somebody who's tried taking screenshots of trailers and um, streams for thumbnails and to make GIFs and to, um, to actually promote the game, to actually create social media content and art i couldn't i can't the it looks so fucking ugly and messy and guys you know how shitty i am i i generally don't care about too much stuff um you know i like to throw something up and it's like oh here's something fun and silly you got yeah have you guys seen my the waifu stuff that i animate i take like 2d drawings and i animate them and make the breast bulge and shit that looks like garbage okay and i'm saying that ashes of creation with the particle effects and just the general art style it's way too messy 
Okay, so this is something that they didn't quite show, but kind of a little bit. Um, they did. They talked about classes a little bit, and this is something that we've known about for a while, I guess. I just want to rant about this real quick, like, um, because we did. We we were watching actually PVP footage. Now, Ashes of Creation is apparently going to be uh, probably a 60% PVP game and a 40% PVE game, um, which actually is kind of parallels a little bit to Albion Online, despite what some people think. And a tremendous amount of it is actually PVE. E content, but it's designed as PvEVP content. Um, so anyways, PvP and class design is going to be cool, but um, basically, uh, I think a question was asked from one of the community members, uh, basically about 64 classes. That's kind of a lot. How are you balancing it? And they essentially answered, and I skipped through a lot of this, but um, they basically answered that... Uh, I don't know, just, just general marketing kind of blah, 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 blah. And, and really, they said a lot of stuff that reminded me a lot of kind of what people are hating on World of Warcraft for with the Covenants. Um, anyways, so you're going to have eight, I guess, eight uh, classes, but then you have a subclass. So I guess te technically you can have 64 classes or combinations. Um... I think 64 unique classes, something that you might see in like a MOBA where you have entire unique character kits, that sounds really cool. It's been a long time, I think, since we've had um, a game that really had that many classes. I think um, Arcage actually did it real well, um, you know, with the mixing and matching. And I think a lot of action RPGs let you do kind of stuff like this, sure. But um, in a game like this, 64, and then just the general archetypes that they have that you can actually see on their website, by the way, um, basically it comes down to to bard, cleric, fighter, mage, range, I don't, ranger, um, rogue, summoner, and tank, and there's, I just want to talk about that, okay, so can we just rant about that, actually, there's, there should probably should be a whole, okay, I'm going to do a whole nother video on that, you know what, yeah, a whole specific video on just that, I think, but, um, basically, I don't think it's going to work like some people think it will. I'm excited, you know, I really liked, or I was, I was hyped for the, uh, systems in Arcage. I'm really excited about kind of making my own class and, um, having my own unique identity in a game. I think it's, uh, pretty fun, but I've been playing World of Warcraft and I love the specific quests and the fantasy and the story revolved around certain ones. Um, like, especially, like, uh, I think if you guys got, got love up and did the class order hall uh, stuff, um, then you're gonna have a lot of fun, especially with Warrior, Death Knight, um, you know, uh, Demon Hunter, yeah, a Paladin, there's some really epic stuff with that. So basically what they're saying is they're not gonna have that. Okay. Um, and a lot of people are just saying like, when you see a system like this, a lot of people initially think, oh, this is only better than having dedicated uh, classes, um, you know, like the Death Knight, or it's like, okay, you're an unholy Death Knight. And yes, you are just like every other unholy Death Knight, but um, there's a lot of depth that goes with that because they can just keep adding systems to those classes and the balancing is generally pretty good. Um, oh, well, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of bad, but for an MMO, it's pretty good, you know? So how are they gonna balance all this? And I think it's fine. Um, they did mention that they want to be able to, like, for players to switch their secondary class. Um, I, I kind of wish, I don't, I don't know, it's, it's a little weird. Um, but I don't think that's, I'm, I'm a little worried that classes aren't going to actually have that much identity. Um, but like, your primary class is going to be your primary class. And I'm also worried that, uh, really, in the end, everything is just kind of cookie cutter. So, even though you have different flavors of things, really, they're all going to play the similar role. However, I, I will say, even though that is my criticism and concern, because that is something that happened in Guild Wars 2, eventually, Guild Wars 2 really honed it in, and in the end game with the newest expansion, you do actually have specific specializations of classes actually having specific roles, finally, for once. And that could happen, this game can iron it out, for sure. But I have a feeling that 64 classes, it's gonna be very homogenous. But, it could still be really fun. I mean, maybe, they. okay, this is what they said. They said that they do want to create specific encounters for all these different classes. Specific encounters for, um, you know, different party compositions. And that could be really cool. It could be really fun. And I think a lot of people are going to feel butthurt. Um, because I think in World of Warcraft, you can, for the most part, for all the casual and general content, you can bring any combination of classes as long as you have 
a tank, a healer, three DPS. Um, but, you know, super hyper competitively, they're actually a specialization. And some people like that, and some people don't. So, how do you guys feel about that? Let me know. But I hope, actually, um, because we do have games like Final Fantasy XIV and Guild Wars 2, especially Elder Scrolls Online, basically, you can bring, for the most part, a lot of stuff. Though Guild Wars 2, again, did special start to specialize. Um, I think that I would really like hyper specialization. It'd be cool if certain encounters needed a Shadow Guardian, and maybe certain other encounters needed a Weapon Master to actually play efficiently. Because the whole point of MMOs is having a fucking ton of people in your guild, and each one really playing their own role for specific, uh, you know, encounters and specific things. So that'd be really great. And I'm sure, you know, some classes aren't going to be as wanted in big groups. Maybe they're more like a 5v5 or small squads. Uh, maybe they do better than that. Maybe they do better in uh, shorter encounters. Some are going to be better in longer raid-style encounters. Uh, um, some are going to be more focused on PvP. I totally get that, and I think that's really exciting, and I, I want that. That's something that I really appreciated inside of Albion Online, with my personal specialization being a solo ganker, uh, running through the world doing PvE. If I see another player, I'll jump on him. You know, the spear line is, is a lot of fun. The spear and leather line is really cool in that, and so that is my specialization. That is my character. Other people are gatherers, and they can play as sort of like mice, where they run around, they have stealth, and they try to avoid gankers. Other people are for the 5v5 guild fights and other people are specifically for pve dungeons and healing and support and etc you know so i think that's cool hyper specialization is fun will it actually come about with the system i don't know they're kind of in my opinion it's mostly bullshit that they're saying and we're gonna have to see how the game actually is designed and balanced but you know that that's my thoughts and feelings on that Anyways, so the last thing that I actually want to talk about um, is going to be that the game looks great. <laughs> Even though kind of earlier I said that the game looks bad. I think the game actually looks pretty great. Um, in the model viewer. Uh, a lot of these streams, they spend a tremendous amount of time talking about the models that they've actually created or are putting into the game. And I think... It looks really good and clean when the game is not in motion. And that's also kind of a negative. The game looks great in standstills, uh, you know, when the developers take specific pictures and screenshots, and I don't know, even then. Um, but yeah, in the model viewer, when you actually see these models, like they showed off dwarves, and maybe you have some complaint about the fantasy of dwarves, and how maybe it looks a little not like the general fantasy race, um, but they still look pretty, I think it looks good. Uh, the thing is, I think it looks great, I think the game is high fidelity, and I think that it can look AAA, and I think it looks like a next generation MMO in a lot of ways, but it, in my, with my, my gamer brain, I just can't get over the fact that this game might be too high fidelity, it might be too noisy, and there just might be too much shit going on with this game to actually be playable. And even in a stylized game like Guild Wars 2, where all the effects had very clear outlines and specific, um, you know, impact points, it, it still was ridiculously noisy. Um, you know, because there's certain post-processing that you can't turn off, there's specific things, um, a certain level of detail that just, it's a lot. Look, guys. With like 50 people on the screen, you know, there's giant monsters and fireballs going off everywhere. It's a fucking lot. You know, in games like Battlefield, they get over it because it's guns. It's not actual giant fireballs and flamethrowers and th basically they're skills that are, are effective smoke screens because they are just that particularly dense. So yeah, but anyways, the game at a standstill looks pretty good, actually. So how that's actually going to unravel and work, I don't know. But I have a feeling if you think Elder Scrolls Online looks decent, then you're going to have a lot of fun with Ashes of Creation. If you think Elder Scrolls Online looks like garbage, then you are going to hate Ashes of Creation, in my opinion. Me, I liked World of Warcraft. I actually liked Guild Wars 2 a little bit, except for, again, the particle density and the post-processing I can't turn off. I think that stuff is really cool. And honestly, I'm kind of a weeb, and as much as I hate the particle fuckery of Final Fantasy XIV, at a standstill, that game actually looks pretty good too. So, what's going to work for which audience? I don't know. I know there's biases involved, so please let me know in the comments below what do you think, but I gotta say, at a standstill, Similar to Final Fantasy XIV, it looks good, but in action, and again, Final Fantasy XIV is not a PvP game, so add, add all the ridiculous bullshit of all these particles in PvP, and it's, start, it look, it's starting to look kind of scary. It looks, it, looks, it looks bad. 
Um, but yeah, I don't know, the models look cool, and I'm excited to see uh, where they bring the fantasy with this game. Because I do know that, uh, you know, earlier levels and when games first launch, things aren't as epic, and sometimes they haven't really come into their art style. Uh, World of Warcraft, it took like five years, actually, to really kind of get the modern WoW aesthetic, actually. Uh, that really clean, bubbly cartoon look. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how things evolve, and I think Final Fantasy XIV actually has looked better and better, actually, with time, um, especially because they had to move, you know, they, they, they built the game with PS3 in mind and they moved on. This game, though, is being built PC in mind, PC gamers, it is, it is a totally a PC MMO, and um, they're just trying to push the graphics as insane as possible, but I think more stylization might be more important, but regardless, the fact remains, it is high fidelity, and it kind of does look good. Uh, you know, at a standstill. And that's what I gotta say. <laughs> Anyways, I know that I'm not really saying everything about this development update. Um, you know, it's an hour and 31 minutes where they say a whole bunch of stuff and things. This is just my rant and ramble that spawns from me checking out this development update. I'm not here to be, you know, an intermediary for you actually doing research of your own and looking up the news of this game. And there's a bunch of other YouTubers who are just totally fine, completely regurgitating and throwing up whatever they just fucking read on their website. So I'm here to just, you know, give you opinions, thoughts and things and review this game as it actually launches. You know, I'm, I'm trying to be that character. That's the character I'm playing. And if you guys think that's fun, awesome then subscribe and you know bump the thumb and stuff like that and definitely join us in the comments below this video is gonna get some comments we're gonna have some fun so yeah much love guys uh what do you guys think about uh, ashes of creation so far and and the bullet points that i talked about uh let us know keyboard warriors and what class are you guys gonna play and don't worry i'm going to record that video talking about the class designs coming right up all right guys keep the hype alive i'll see you again next time <laughs>